Hey everyone, thank you so much um, for joining. I am Brittany from the College Greenlight team. Um, I just wanted to know who's in the room. If I can have everyone, please introduce yourself. Tell us where uh, who you are and where you're from. Um, tell us what you're excited about to hear um, from the Berkeley team. Um, uh, as you're doing that, uh, I just wanted to take some time out uh, to thank you all so much for joining um, our presentation uh, today. Um, we know that this is not the ideal block party that we would all love to be uh, outdoors and listening to music, eating with friends, but uh, we hope that you all have enjoyed um, the previous presentations from Colgate University um, and Smith um, College. And if you all um, didn't get a chance to see those both incredibly and informative presentations, um, we will be uh, sending over the recordings via email so you all won't forget. And also we're gonna be recording um, today's presentation as well. So um, if you need to hop out, um, please feel free uh, to uh, take a look at your emails and um, uh, don't forget if you wanna um, answer any questions or get any of your questions answered, you can use um, our uh, our uh, have a question, um, ask a question tool um, below. Um, now, just want to let you all know, there are no right or wrong questions here, but um, we do ask that um, you all ask questions that are not specifically um, uh, about your GPA or your test scores or admissions chances because our colleges, um, college reps here cannot see your full application. So um, it may be a little bit um, difficult for them. Uh, so um, we do encourage you guys uh, to use the chat, a live chat feature to the right um, or if you're using your phone at the bottom. Um, and we want you all to um, hear from other people, um, other students um, and counselors. If you're in the room, please feel free to introduce yourself. You guys are um, our experts, too, and we're really leaning on you. Um, and if you all are curious about your admissions um, chances, go ahead and visit collegegreenlight.com. Yes, we are a website and you all can explore 3000 um, uh, college profiles and you can explore scholarship opportunities as well. Um, okay, now last but not least, I want to make sure that you all give us some uh, social media love. Please um, uh, 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 let us know how we're doing at uh, hashtag College Block Party 20. Okay, so for the main entree, we are looking forward <laughs> to our next presenter, UC Berkeley. Abby Jones and Deputy Director of Admissions. Um, yes, yes. Abby Jones, direct, uh, Deputy Director of Admissions, and Robert Penman, Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions, are here to share their tips and tricks to building a college list that will help you find your best fit academically, socially, and financially. All right, team, Abby, Robert, hello. Welcome to the College Greenlight Bop Party stage. Hi, everyone. Um, it's great to be here with everyone tonight. I cannot believe that 3,400 people or so are hearing my voice at the moment. <laughs> it's uh, definitely a record for, for me, and I've talked to some pretty big audiences in the past, so it's great to be here with you all. And I love seeing where everyone's from, so um, love love to see that we're, we're seeing students from around the country tonight. Um, my name is Robert Pemmon. I'm Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at UC Berkeley. And I'm here with my colleague, Abby, and we'll introduce ourselves in just a second. Um, we're here to talk about finding your fit, right? About how to distinguish one college from the next. And um, as you kind of go through this process, what we really want to do is give you some tips and tools and tricks that we've learned over our um, many years. I don't know how many years we've been doing this, but we've been doing this for a while. Um, things that we've kind of learned along the way that, that we think will be helpful to you all. Uh, we do have a, a couple of polls running, and so if you if you want to answer those poll questions, that would actually really help us in kind of just figuring out where you're at in the process. Um, and and as we go through, we'll kind of respond to those polls and and provide some some um, some thoughts about that as well. So um, from there, we are going to jump right in. And I 
said that I would introduce our, we would introduce ourselves. And so we'll go ahead and do that now. And Abby, do you want to start? Sure, happy to kick it off. Um, hi everyone, my name is Abby Jones. I'm the Deputy Director of Undergraduate Admissions at, at UC Berkeley and really excited to join you. I see we have some Kansans in the group. I, I grew up um, in Kansas City, moved around a lot growing up, um, but grew up and spent my formative high school years in Kansas City. So that's where I was when I started this college search um, and, and started thinking about the best fit for me. Um, and I ultimately went far away from home, um, went to college in, in North Carolina and really kind of started my undergraduate admission career there. I was a campus tour guide and, um, and found that I really enjoyed uh, connecting with high school students. Um, my four years in college were, um, I, I just called my high school years formative. My college, my four college years were were much more formative than that. Um, and it's really where I kind of stepped outside my comfort zone, left home by myself for the first time. I didn't know anyone, figured out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Maybe I'm still figuring that out. No, I think I've I figured it out in college admissions. And I just realized that helping guide students to find the place where they were gonna best thrive in those four formative years um, was something I really enjoyed. I went to a, a large public high school and did have a counselor who was supportive, but a lot of people in, in my hometown kind of stayed close to home. And so I was very fortunate that I had um, supportive parents in my college search and in working with high school students in the admission office at, at my first institution, my alma mater, um, I realized that um, that students really kind of need that that support in taking 4,000 or more colleges and universities in the country to find that right fit. And so that's where I found um, my passion and look forward to um, talking to you about it here in just a bit. And so for me, like my name, like I said, my name is Robert Pemmon, I'm Associate Director at UC Berkeley. This is my, I think, 17th year working in college admissions. I did the math while I was, uh, listening to Abby for a second. And um, um, just a little bit of background for me, like I grew up in, in California. I, I was born and raised in California. I have not lived anywhere else except for California, but I have lived all over the state. I actually grew up in the in the Central Valley of California in a little town called Stockton. Um, those of you who are from California may know Stockton. Um, those of you who are not, have probably never heard of, of Stockton, California, but just in case. Um, and I went to the University of California. I did not go to Berkeley. I went to another campus in Southern California. I won't say which one, I'll make you guess. Um, but uh, I was a first generation college student. So, you know, being uh, in, a, in a similar path to Abby, being a tour guide and kind of sharing my story and my path to higher education and all of the things that I had learned um, not to do the hard way um, really kind of ignited my passion for helping other students. And so I, I immediately joined the admissions office at the first chance I got um, as soon as I graduated and have been here working for the University of California almost the entire time, um, helping students uh, understand the system, helping students navigate the system and the very, very complex institution that it is. Um, helping counselors understand that, helping CBOs understand that as well. So um, that has been my path and, and really kind of what I'm passionate about. And I can't think of a better topic for for tonight to, to really kind of highlight that for us. So um, so with that, let's go ahead and move on to um, tonight's agenda. So what we want to start off with first are just the basics. You know, what are the, what are the basics of a college search? Abby mentioned this and, and Brittany mentioned this as well. There's you know, more than 4,000 colleges and universities in the United States alone. And if you think about that number, um, really think about how to start a search, that can be super overwhelming. Um, and so we just wanna start with the basics. Like what are the basics of a college search and, and, and where, where do, what's the starting point? Um, and then from there, what we'll do is we'll highlight some of the tools that you can use uh, to support your college search. There's a lot of resources out there and, and, and whether you know it or not, there's actually a pretty vast support network to help you along the way. And then the last bit here, we will um, spend some time on the college visit process and really understanding how to make the most of a college visit um, to help narrow down um, schools that you might apply to, but also schools that you ultimately might attend. Um, because we both fully believe that any school that you apply to, you should be prepared to attend. Um, and the college visit process can, can actually be, be very helpful uh, in that regard. 
So before we move forward, what I want to do is look at one of the polls, because the first poll question that we had asked was, which tools are you using to research colleges? And, um, and I'm actually very, very happy to see the results of this poll. Um, although letter D, maybe we should, we should find some other tools for you there besides Google. Um, but, but seeing that, that most of you are using information provided by your college counselor or college greenlight is great. You know, one of the statistics that Abby and I found as we were kind of doing um, our research for tonight is that in one survey, more than two thirds of students said that rankings were one of the most important things in sorting out the differences between colleges and universities. You know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of, I, I think some value to using rankings as a starting point, but rankings can also be very misleading, right? Um, they can, they can, they take into account things such as reputation and selectivity. And we don't really think that that's necessarily telling you anything about the quality of the school itself, only that we turn lots of people away, right? And that people think very highly of us. And so we think that there are some better tools and we're gonna move on to those now to help you uh, help guide your college search. So Abby. Great. So um, now we want to just dive in kind of of the basics of the college search um, and how to get started. Uh, but before we dive too far, um, Robert, if you'll uh, click to the next slide, um, want to talk about the, the good news. Let's start on a high note. So there's a, a lot of craziness going on around the world. So let's start this on a high note with you'll go to college if you want to go to college you'll go to college. Um, I do wanna quickly open um, our second poll. And again, uh, feel free to jump in there if you haven't already, but I see um, over a hundred responses already. Um, how are you currently feeling about going to college? Um, some of you, wow, you are ahead of the game. You already know where you want to go to college. I don't know if I was sure where I wanted to go to college even after I decided. So you are ahead of the game. Um, but for those of you um, who say, you know you'll go to college, just not sure where, I think you're in a really great place. Um, and, and that's why you're here today to, to kind of get past that, just not sure where, how do I figure that out? Um, and and a, a couple of votes for people tell me I'm, I'm supposed to go to college, but I'm a little unsure. Um, I think the fact that you have um, some folks pushing you to go to college um, is a great thing. And you have people around you, your college green light, um, family, um, admission officers like us to, to kind of help guide you in this process and, and even help you understand why college may, um, may be for you, even if you're unsure. Um, I don't really know if college is for me. I don't see any votes there. And I have to admit back to my slide, um, we're here to tell you that that college is for you. If that's something that you're reaching for, um, there are, are counselors and, and admission officers who are gonna help guide you. Again, that's why Robert and I are, are in this field. Um, so just to give you a, a couple of quick stats that, um, that that we hope will be helpful that come directly from, from NACAC, the National Association of College Admission Counseling. Um, the average admission rate of four-year colleges is about two-thirds, 66.7%. And it's interesting, you know, Robert brought up rankings and the fact that selectivity plays a role. And I feel like there's, there's all this hype around 10 or 20 or 30 universities with these really low admission rates. And those are the, the universities that we often talk about. And guess what? Over 80% of colleges admit over 50% of their applicants. And the average admission rate is 66.7%. And then 77% of students are admitted to their first choice college. Um, and we'll talk more about kind of how to decide what your first choice college is and, and whether or not um, there even is such thing as a, a first choice college, which will transition me into my next slide. So thinking about that first choice college or the perfect college, when you think about college and, and we'll talk in a minute about all the things that, that go into your dreams of what a college environment might look like. But when you think about that perfect college, 
guess what? It's not the same for everyone. There's really no such thing as perfection. It's about the perfect college for you, the institution that is the right fit for you. And that's going to be different for each and every student. Um, and really, this I think this college search process um, and even the process of applying to college, once you get to the point of applying and writing those personal statements or those personal insight questions, if you apply um, to the UC system, this is really an exercise in, in self-reflection. And that's why I think it can be so challenging um, because I don't think a lot of high school students at the time that they're approaching the college search have really kind of taken a minute to really think about what is important to me? Why do I care about the things I care about? What type of environment am I going to thrive in? Have I thrived in high school? Why or why not? What am I looking for, right? And so it's this exercise of self-reflection that I think a lot of us as high school students haven't really broached yet. And so it can feel challenging, but I think one of the things that's most important to keep in mind is there is not just a perfect college. There's a college that is the right fit for you, and that's going to be different um, for each of you. So this exercise in, in self-reflection, um, Robert, if you'll take me to the next slide, this self-assessment exercise, what are you looking for? And, and here are some of the, the things that we have brought up that you might be thinking about. I'm going to direct us um, to our um, poll number three, just to think broadly, what is most important to you when selecting a college? Mm -hmm. And I see C, academic programs, is the most popular, the most votes. Um, I see some more votes coming in now. Absolutely, academic programs. And I, I did see a question earlier that, that we can um, address later around finding the right major. Um, we can definitely talk about that. But academic programs, um, what do you want to study? Yeah, that's absolutely important to think about. If you really want to study um, psychology and the school you're looking at doesn't have a psychology program, is that the right school for you? Now, there's other majors to consider, but academic programs, it, it makes sense to me that that has the most votes. Um, social life, yeah, college is about a four-year full experience. You're going to college to get a great education. So I'm glad to see that academic programs has a lot of votes. That's why you're going to college, to get an education. But that education doesn't just happen in the classroom or in the labs or while you're studying at night. It happens with your peers. When I said that those four years of college were incredibly formative for me, it wasn't just the four hours a day that I was spending in a classroom. It was the full experience. And so social life is absolutely important. Size, proximity to home. Um, and let's actually, let's actually take those a bit further. I see that academic programs is the most important thing. Um, but let's dive a little bit deeper into to some other things that you may be looking for. Um, and Robert, if you want to share um, and, and dive into poll four here. Yeah, so in poll four, we had a question about how far away from home uh, would you like to be? And so it looks like the most in, the the most popular answer was about proximity. Um, doesn't really matter to to most students, or to at least a half of the students who've responded. Let's put it that way um, to this particular question. You know, I think it's important to consider distance from home, and, and there's a lot of reasons to consider that. Right? Um, it may be a comfort zone for you per personally. Um, it may be a comfort zone for your parents. Um, there may be some financial issues to consider um, as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about finances uh, as we get deeper into this presentation. Um, but proximity to, to home is, is really something that's a very personal um, decision. I think, you know, when, when I talk to students about um, uh, wh where they want to go to school and, and where in the country or around the world they may want to study, um, I challenge students really to think outside of their comfort zone quite a bit um, and, and recognize that that there, again, are some challenges with, with going uh, long distances uh, away for, for college. But 
but that it can be really, um, it can really be a, a unique experience if you're comfortable. Um, and I know Abby would add here too that that this is the one time in your life where you get to you get to try something new, um, and you can always go home if you don't like it, right? Um, it's not the it's not the ideal solution, I think, for most of us, but it is it is something to to be con, uh, to consider um, as you as you start this search. Yeah, I always. Um... I always think what better time to step outside your comfort zone and go far away from home than a time that is limited, right? Four yep. years, most most often four years. Um, so you can always go back home. Um, you may be from, um, I'll use New York City as an example, because I, I used to um, travel to New York City as an admission territory. And a lot of students would say, I never want to leave New York City. Who would yeah. leave New York City, right? <laughs> Um, and I'm sure some some chaps will, will come in. We've got some New Yorkers in the group, right? But who would want to leave New York City? What better time to go somewhere else, to come back to New York City four years later? And that four-year experience, it's solely meant to ensure that you, that you thrive, right? A, a college and university is set up to teach um, young people and and to make sure that they not only survive those four years but thrive in those four years and so there's students um and faculty and staff who are it, it's a it's a support system built in so i think um thanks for for bringing that up robert he's he's right in that i i always bring up the fact that it's such a great time to consider stepping outside your comfort zone um, yeah. when there's a little bit of a safety net yeah i wonder if we had i mean i would almost rather have a, another question in here i'm curious how many students, parents would actually answer something differently um, in, in response to this question. Sometimes the, the challenge about getting away from home is mom and dad may not be so comfortable with, with letting you um, uh, cross the country, for example, right? Uh, or to, to leave a proximity to home. So always something to, to have that conversation uh, early on, you know, I think to, to have that conversation early on and, and, and think about that. Um, all right, so let's move on to our last poll question. Uh, we asked a question here about what size feels best to you in terms of, of a college size, right? And so uh, we offered four, four options and it looks like most folks think that uh, the, the size of the institution really is not um, that important so long as you can get to know your teachers uh, and they can get to know you. Uh, and that is a really wonderful answer to that question. Um, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about the um, pros and cons of large institutions versus small institutions. Um, glad to see some medium-sized institutions in here, kind of best of both worlds, right? Um, you can get a little bit of a small, uh, small school feel at a, at, a, at a larger, more um, perhaps more well-resourced institution, right? So anything you want to add to that, Abby? Um, no, I think let's, um, let's take the, the size conversation a, a little bit further. Yeah. So let's talk about the um, big school, the pros and the cons. I forgot that this was right after that slide. <laughs> um, so big school. So UC Berkeley is a big school, like by definition, hands down. I think we have a total of 40 some odd thousand students, about 30,000 of those are undergrads, big school. Um, big schools have some pros, and and those are um, generally in the academic areas. You know, we have a wide variety of courses, and most large institutions do. I think Berkeley has thirteen thousand courses or something that we offer every year. Um, there are student-led courses, which is really great. Um, we have, I think, three hundred and fifty different academic programs. We're kind of emblematic of that large school institution in terms of our academic offering. We also have a large research enterprise, and most large schools do, right? Most large schools are research institutions, public institutions, um, and and so we have well-stocked libraries. We've got a ton of research opportunities. We have well-funded sports programs. Um, usually, plenty of housing available. Um, there's a lot of big benefits to to the big school. Um, there are some drawbacks, though, and I've got to be frank with you. You know, sometimes at a big school, the 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 infrastructure and the the bureaucracy can be so great um, that you kind of have to be a little bit of a go getter at a at a large institution. You've kind of got to go out there and kind of forge your own way. Um, and so if that is you, that actually might be something that you would see as a, as a fun challenge 
um, to, to, to conquer um, and something that you might get quite a bit of, of joy out of. Um, you can also have large classes. And so, you know, even at a large institution though, like you've got to take that with a grain of salt, right? Um, large classes usually have discussion sections or labs, which are much smaller, uh, much more like your, your high school um, environments, but the, you can have classes that are upwards of 700, 800 people, 800 students um, with, with some graduate assistance or teaching assistance, right, to, to help you along the way. And so if you're worried about um, um, that, that large school environment, I'd really make sure that you ask your questions up front uh, with, with whoever you're working with. Um, I mentioned that there's, that, you know, you can have a pretty big bureaucracy um, but, but there's red tape even around getting into classes that are maybe not exactly for your major. Um, so for example, if you are in the computer science department as a, as your major, the computer science department might be very territorial around their classes to make sure that they have enough spaces for their CS students, right? Um, if you're not a CS major, you may not be able to access those classes and that's something to be aware of as well. Um, and then the big one is that the faculty sometimes are focused on their own research um, and and their their graduate students who are working in 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 their research labs and and may um, sometimes not always devote as much attention to undergraduate students right so that's something to be considerate of as well the benefit of go again though is that if you're at a research institution you're getting the most current knowledge brought into the classroom um, and so there's pros and cons that kind of flip back and forth. You can turn all of these cons into a pro, you can turn all the pros into a con, um, um, something to, to just really think about as you're, as you're really working through this deciding, this decision process. Great. And just like you can turn the pros into cons and cons into pros, you can kind of think about, you know, pros of a big school as cons of a small school, perhaps. And again, the point that will continue to hit home that this is about you and what is the best fit for you, right? So um, I work at UC Berkeley now um, and I walk around every day and there's so much energy and excitement. Um, it's such a vibrant community. Um, I never grew up really following college sports and I've got a college football team, which is exciting. I've really, um, really leaned into to being a member of the UC Berkeley community. But I'll tell you when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, UC Berkeley was not for me. I went to a very small school as an undergraduate. Um, and, you know, maybe if I were to do it all over again, now that I've experienced Berkeley as a staff member, I'd, I'd choose differently. But at that time for me, a smaller school was what was right. Um, I knew that a, a class of seven or 800 um, would be overwhelming to me. And so my largest class size um, at my small institution was 35 students, right? That's not for everyone either. Some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, that's like high school all over again. I'm trying to get out of high school, right? <laughs> so it's really about what is best for you. And that's what, what's really important to do that self-reflection of, of where you would best thrive. Um, some additional pros, you know, small class sizes, hands-on learning opportunities, um, you know, the chance to really interact closely with professors um, inside and even maybe outside of the classroom. Um, cons could be, you know, a, a lack of, of opportunities or resources, maybe less research facilities or less housing options. Um, and it's something that, that you really have to dig a little bit deeper and think about, um, and think about some of those ratios, right? Like what is, you know, there might be fewer research opportunities, but there's also fewer students, right? How available and accessible are those research opportunities? Are those housing options? I saw a question um, or a question or comment in the chat earlier about, you know, are small schools always in more remote places? Um, and I think that points to the, the last con of fewer entertainment and social opportunities. Um, and, and so thinking about, okay, there's the size of the school, but what's around the school, 
right? Um, is it in a small town really far away from a larger city or is it right outside of a large city? Um, are there sports, um, whether they're division two or division three or even a, a smaller division one school? So um, again, it's really doing the research about each individual school, but digging deep into what is the best fit for you um, right now. So let's go ahead and, and um, move along now that you've kind of started thinking about what is the what are the types of schools that are a good fit for you? Um, what are some tools to support you in um, taking this search a bit farther, getting from the brainstorming phase to deciding where you want to apply? So where to start? Online, as many of you said, right? Many of you said you're starting with a Google search and we're gonna give you some more tools, but hey, that's a starting point. Just like I think, you know, Robert made the point that college rankings can even be a starting point. You may know that you are really interested in industrial engineering, but you don't even know what institutions offer that. And so sometimes a quick Google search or looking at rankings of the top industrial engineering programs that doesn't mean that you should only apply to the top three or the top 10, uh, but it might be a starting point. So online is definitely a great start. Of course, College Greenlight um, is, is a great resource. And I think um, it is awesome, this block party. I'm, I'm super excited to be a part of it. And I've looked at the, the titles and the colleagues of mine presenting. So this is a great starting point. Um, and, and to Brittany's point, as she kicked this off, uh, College Greenlight's a website and there are great tools and resources there for you. Um, university websites and, and campus tours. Um, I saw a question come in earlier um, about, you know, can we really get a sense of a college virtually? Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about being able to step foot on campus and how helpful that can be. But I think right now in the world we're living in, right? we are having to find ways to share a bit about UC Berkeley and help students understand the place that we are when students can't step foot on campus. Or I guess maybe if you're local, you could, we're allowed to go for walks, so you could maybe go for a walk on campus, but you can't step foot in the buildings and take that campus tour. So right now, I think is, is even further proof that um, you can get to know a college from far, far away. And we are, um, we are really committed to, to, to making sure that you have the chance to do that. Thinking about our newly admitted students. We just admitted a whole class of freshmen and transfer students, and they're having to make their decisions without coming to campus. And so we've come up with all of these virtual ways for students to really get to know us. Um, so starting online is, is really a great place. Um, social media, I think is, um, you know, social media is becoming more and more popular and, um, might not be where your mind goes in terms of the college search, but a lot of institutions, the institution as a whole will post um, post different things on social media. Sometimes admission offices have their own accounts. Different student organizations might have their own social media accounts and seeing what that institution or what that organization um, is most interested in posting and, and sharing um, can help you get to know a lot about a place as well. Um, was really glad to see earlier um, in the, the poll that you're using your college counselors, um, your advisors, whether that is at your high school, whether that's through a community-based organization, through College Greenlight. Um, those are your best resources. Um, and then we're hopefully good resources as well. Um, you know, the nice thing about your counselors is they know a, a wide variety of institutions where you can come to us and, and typically learn um, about one specific institution. Um, but online, your own research, um, college counselors and, and university um, reps are, are great resources. Right now, we're disappointed that we can't come to your school and visit you, um, but hopefully, um, by the fall, you'll have some college reps visiting you. And so make sure to ask your college counselor as you go into um, your senior year if there are any college or university reps visiting. You don't always have to come to us. We can we can come straight to you. Yeah, and I'll just add to this too, that, that this is all about starting to narrow down your search before 
you know, before you get to the point of making um, your first campus visit, right? Like trying to, to figure out where you would even consider applying. And all of these are really great um, ways to do that. And starting early, I would just say start early as, as, you, as much as you possibly can too, right? Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the campus visit. Once you've kind of started this, this initial, you know, search of, um, of schools and you started to narrow down the list, you know, at some point you're going to want to visit the institution in, in, in some way, shape or form. You know, as Abby mentioned, COVID-19 has really thrown a wrench in a lot of those visit plans um, for our students and, and for ourselves, to be quite frank. Um, I am very much looking forward to a fall travel season if we, if we should, should get one. Um, but let's talk about the college visit and, and, and what that means. So first things first. Finding the right fit really does mean asking the quote unquote right questions, right? Um, I just said right like three times, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, but but it's important to ask questions. I think it, like, let's just start there, right? Um, you can go on a college search and go to a college visit and never talk to a single person other than your tour guide. Um, and maybe not even ask them any questions. And I think that it's important to, to think about the questions that you might ask um, as you prepare to, to, um, to, to, to make these visits. So first and foremost, you know, we ask all the questions that, you've, that we've been asking so far. You know, do you have my major and things like that. But let's go a little bit deeper, right? We talked a little bit about research. So maybe you should ask, and if you're interested in research, what type of research opportunities are available? Are there internships? What types of internships? How many internships? You know, ask, um, ask your tour guide or your, your, your admissions rep to kind of uh, expand on, on some of that information so that you have a deeper understanding of what, um, of, of what they're saying. Um, are there community-based projects? And when do they start? Sometimes, you know, research opportunities are really limited to, to students who are upper class, right? Uh, upper classmen. So, so keep that in, in mind as well. Um, you might ask a question about, you know, how many students study abroad or for how long? Um, ask about graduation or retention rates and ask, ask if there's a graduation gap, a retention rate gap uh, amongst different students with, from different backgrounds. Um, ask what percentage of students are living on or near campus um, versus community. And all of these I'll say too, keep in mind that this is all about what matters to you, right? If you're not worried about how many students live on campus or how many students are commuting, don't ask. Um, it can give you a sense of the environment on campus, right? If that's important to you, I think you should ask and, and dive a little bit deeper. I think it's also important to ask about the availability of student support services though. And I think this is true no matter where you go. Um, I think that if you, if you decide to go to a small school or a big school, you should really ask um, uh, about, about these services. Because as Abby, Abby mentioned before, and, and I've talked about too, you know, navigating an institution, you know, you're, you're fresh out of high school or, or starting from a community college, you know, making sure that you have the support to get through the four years and to graduate on time is, is really, really important. Um, and then I would also ask if finances are important to you that you ask, you know, what percentage of students are, are graduating with debt and what is that average debt? Um, I saw some chat questions about, about going out of state or maybe it was one of the questions about going out of state and out of state tuition and that's important. We're gonna talk about finances in just a couple seconds. Um, and then also I would ask about institutional priorities. You know, is there a priority around diversity? Is there a priority around curriculum innovation? Um, is there any other type of initiative that is important to the institution right now? And does that align with your own values or your own uh, priorities um, from, from an institution and from a, from a, from a college search perspective? Yeah, so digging even deeper, we have seen that that question um, that is is currently at the top with with 44 votes about considering going to a university out of state, but but being scared of the tuition. Um, we say to make make the the, the financial conversation a, a part of the conversation early if it's going to be a part of the conversation in April. What we don't want to happen is for you to fall in love with what you believe is your perfect school 
and then come to April and all of a sudden realize that that institution is not feasible for you and your family. So it's just better to, to have the conversation now and to determine um, if finances need to be a part of the conversation, um, apply for merit scholarships if, um, if you can either find those externally or institutions that offer merit scholarships and ask certain questions of these institutions. Do you practice need blind or need sensitive or aware admissions? Um, what percent of a family's financial need do you meet? How do you meet that need? Is that need met through loans that you have to pay back or through grants um, that is really gift aid to you? Um, ask those questions early if they're important for you and your family. Um, and really the, the conversation um, about college costs and going in or out of state really depends on a lot of factors. The state that you live in, the state that you're looking to apply to college in, whether you're looking at a public state institution or a private institution. There are some um, public state institutions um, who are really looking for out-of-state students and providing very generous financial aid for out-of-state students. That's not the case everywhere, however. You might find that going to a private college is actually more affordable for you and your family than going to your local state school, depending on the institution and your family's financial situation. You know, there are a lot of colleges and universities with very high sticker prices that are bigger than cars and make us all want to run in the opposite direction and think, I could never afford that. Um, but depending, again, on your family's financial situation, and the, the financial aid policies at that institution, it might actually be affordable. So my biggest thing right here is don't let a sticker price of an institution have you run in the opposite direction, but at the same time, don't ignore the finances altogether if that does need to be a part of the conversation for you and your family. Robert, anything you'd add to that? No, I would just, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. I. I you know, some states are definitely more friendly um, for for those of you who are considering going out of state, you know, more friendly to out of state students than than others. And, and to keep that in mind and, and really to have that conversation um, up front and early. I, I never want I always particularly say that that I never want cost to be a barrier for students. Right. Um, but that's me saying that. Right. That's not always reality. Um, and so, so it's important to have that conversation. I don't think that you should ultimately 100% check a school off your list, um, not knowing the full picture, because again, as Abby mentioned, there might be merit scholarships that are available, um, and not, and, and like, for example, Berkeley has merit scholarships, the Regents and Chancellor scholarship that's not offered, um, like to every single student. It's a very selective process, but that might change a student's financial situation right and so some of that has to be some of that's unknown um at, at, at in october right then it, it then uh and can be answered in april but but it's important to have that conversation and to be realistic about that um up front because as i saw in the chat yes it would be so sad um to to have to say no because of a financial issue right um yeah. So, so something to keep in mind. Yeah. yeah, two quick things. I saw one um, question in the chat about how do you determine if a school is um, quote unquote friendly to out of state students. Mm. Um, I think ask the, the questions that you see here um, and you can probably come up with others on your own or with college counselors, yeah. ask them of each institution. The Where you should start is that self-reflection again in deciding the schools that are the best fit for you. And if you then determine that a school out of state um, is a good fit for you, um, then ask those questions of the institution. And and um, we're not trying to like pull on under the rug. Like we're we want to be honest and upfront with you um, about this process. So if our cost is X, we're not going to tell you it's Y, right? And and we're here, you know, admission offices and financial aid offices. We're we consider ourselves admission counselors. We have financial aid counselors for a reason to walk you through this process. One last thing I just wanted to mention when I talked about merit scholarships um, and how you can apply um, 
to merit scholarships at specific colleges and universities, but also in your community, you can Google merit scholarships and find merit scholarships online that you can apply for. You can um, sometimes find scholarships that churches are giving, a lot of different community organizations. Um, if you're using Google, which we already admitted earlier, we all use, right? If you're using Google and Googling merit scholarships and you find a scholarship that you have to pay to apply for, don't do that. Don't do it. There are lots of scholarships out there. You shouldn't have to pay to then get more money. So um, that's a little bit of a trick. Um, apply for merit scholarships, but don't pay to do it. All right, Robert, let's move on to the next slide. I wanna make sure we have time for questions. So I'm gonna kind of move through this. Um, Robert already pointed out, start early. And you already are, right? The fact that you're on here, you're starting this process early. And students, you should be taking the lead in this process. This is um, possibly, you know, as I said earlier, it's the first time I went really far away from home by myself. It's probably the first um, really big decision that you will make as a as a young adult. And so you should be taking the lead on this. That doesn't mean that you don't have your counselors, parents, guardians, friends, siblings to support you. But this is your process, right? It's the best fit college for you. And so you should really take the lead um, and tell all of those other people, if they're trying to take the lead ahead of you, tell them that it's your process. Um, you want to, to design a search, do that self-reflection and decide the schools that are the best fit for you. Um, and again, that's gonna require you to really dig deep um, and, and help you figure that out. Um, Demonstrate your interest. You may have heard about this term, demonstrated interest. Some institutions consider whether or not you seem to be interested in their institution when they make admission decisions. Not all schools do this, but some do. Um, and you can ask that question. Feel free, if you found a college that you're interested in, feel free to ask an admission officer, hey, do you track demonstrated interest? They should tell you. Again, we want to be honest with you and guide you throughout this process. Um, and that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to visit the campus, um, but that means that you may say, hey, UC Berkeley, and, and we don't track demonstrated interest, so I'll just use that. <laughs> you know, hey, UC Berkeley, I just wanna let you know I visited campus and I really had a, a great experience. I'm looking forward to applying. Um, a quick email to an admission officer is a way to demonstrate your interest and, and really help you stand out um, and, and kind of put that face to that name with that application. Um, again, we don't track demonstrated interest, but some institutions do. Robert, I'll have you move to the to the next slide. Um, that, as you're doing that, I'm gonna, uh, that last bullet point about build your network of advocates. I already, I already mentioned some of them, right? Counselors, parents, guardians, family, friends, um, those people who can support you in this process. Um, and as admission officers, you know, when it comes to reviewing your application, we're advocating for you as well. We're here to support you in this process. Um, we've already talked about starting this process online, um, looking for different prospective student events. Um, we, since we can't hold campus tours and information sessions right now due to COVID-19, we have information sessions virtually on our website. Um, and a lot of institutions are doing that. So you really can, can start online. Um, and then if you do have the chance to visit the campus, um, you can meet with admission officers um, and, and ask questions about the institution or the application process. Um, but really you should go beyond that. So Robert, if you'll take me to the next slide, um, you really should go beyond the admission office. Um, we already talked about um, the chance to interact with current students um, and not just that tour guide, right? Um, walk around campus. Are people friendly? That might give you a sense of whether or not that's a, a good fit institution for you. Are people friendly? Do they seem happy? When you say, hey, what's your favorite thing about this school? What's your least favorite thing about this school? What are their answers? Does that resonate with you? Um, so really go past the admission office, past the campus tour. And just a reminder, if you can't visit, that's okay. And again, I think the current situation we're living in is um, a perfect reminder 
of it being okay. But I tell you, if you're able to get step foot on a college campus or a handful of college campuses in your local area, do that. Some of you said, hey, I want to get as far away from home as I possibly can, right? You know that you are not staying in your backyard, but you might have a really large state institution in your backyard. You might have a really small liberal arts college in your backyard. And you could visit both of those places knowing that they're probably not the place you're going to end up. Who knows? Maybe they will be. Maybe you'll see it up and, and really <laughs> have a great experience. But you can start walking around and doing that self-reflection and thinking, okay, these classroom sizes are really small. How does that feel for me? Right? Um, getting a sense of, is this the type of environment that I think would work well for me? So start right in your backyard, but go beyond that campus tour once you have narrowed down the institutions that you think you may want to either apply to or ultimately enroll in if you don't get the chance to visit until the spring or summer. And then one last thing, above all else, we think you should really trust your instinct, trust your gut, right? Um, you know, Abby mentioned this before that she didn't get like that, that chill, that's that chill down your spine when you know you've picked the right institution. And for a lot of folks, it's not like that, right? Um, but you might get a sense that a place is not right for you. Um, and I think that that can actually be more powerful than than the gut feeling that this is the right place for you, right? I think that there are multiple institutions that that each of us would probably do very very well at, um, and would thrive at, and and would would have a really great experience. Um, but a lot of times, there's institutions that just kind of ring a bell right away. That you're like, hmm, I don't know that this is the right environment environment for me, or that this is the right kind of institution that I want to be at. Um, I feel myself getting lost, or I feel like I'm standing out too much, right? Um, there's a lot of those those kinds of reactions, I think, more than anything else. And so you should trust that. If you if you you know come to California, come to Berkeley's campus, and 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 you feel great about it, fantastic. We love it. We love to have you. Um, if you don't get that feeling, listen to that. Do you know what I mean? And think about that. Think about that every single time. That, that you go visit institution, check in with yourself right after and see how do I feel? How did I feel about that particular institution? Could I see myself spending four years of my adult life um, at that institution in that community? And if the answer is yes, then you might have found a pretty darn good fit um, for your college search. So I think that wraps us up in terms of official slides. I'll just go ahead and transition us over to this one here. Um, there are a 51 questions, and I don't know that we'll get to all 51, but I definitely want to answer some. I think we should answer some. So should we just jump in? Yeah, so um, I'm going to, um, there are some questions about the application process, which I think we definitely um, can touch on, but I may jump um, to some questions that are a little bit more um, just about the kind of college search and finding the right fit, um, yeah, just because cool. other opportunities to talk about the college admissions process and some of these other block parties. So I see one that is, um, what are things um, I should do to prepare for college in my senior year? Um, I would say, I mean, what we've been talking about already with um, kind of this self-reflection of what is the environment that is the best fit for me. I think that would be um, that would be helpful. I think um, spending this summer um, also like not procrastinating going into your senior year with um, your college list, um, perhaps thinking about those essays and I'll, I'll tie two questions together. Um, one question was about personal statements and personal insight questions, that self-reflection of what is the story I want to share in my application, right? Um, not what is the story that UC Berkeley wants to read, but what is my story that is going to help them get to know me and see if I'm a good fit for that institution, right? And so starting that self-reflection now and even maybe starting to jot down some ideas, if not start writing some of those essays. Um, 
I feel like, you know, I think a lot of high school students write one personal statement and then the one they end up submitting is like the fourth one um, mm -hmm. because that self-reflection happens as you're writing. So if you start that process sooner rather than later, um, I think that will benefit you. What else senior, senior year, Robert, would you say? I think, I mean, the, the easiest one is don't let your grades slip, right? I mean, we're going through that process now at Berkeley, um, students who've been admitted and, and maybe have let their grades slip a little bit. So you want to keep that up. Um, I think in terms of, of preparing for senior year and preparing for the application process, you know, clearly Abby mentioned the, the, um, the personal statements and kind of starting to work on developing your story. And I think also developing your story in your extracurriculars is also important. Um, you know, grades, test scores, those are kind of, um, I don't know how to put this, like every single student submits grades and test scores, right? Every single student. Um, and, um, and so I think that students can do themselves a service by really thinking about their involvement um, inside and outside the classroom and kind of and what that looks like and what is the what is the story that you want to tell, not just in long form, uh, either a personal insight question or an essay or, or something like that. But what is the what is the story you want to tell about um, what interests you? Right. Um, what are you looking for out of your college experience? What are you going to bring to to the institution that you ultimately decide to attend? And I think that, that spending some time this summer thinking about that entire picture, um, that book that you're basically writing for us, um, thinking about that now can really help to, to make the application process, I think, a little less stressful. Um, and, and then start to investigate the other applications out there, right? So there's a common app, there's the, uh, coalition app. There's the University of California application, which you know several of you have asked questions about. Um, there, there are a number of institutions out there who have their own homegrown applications, and so spending some time getting familiar with those ahead of time um, again can make August, September, October, November, December, and January a little less stressful for you um, in the long run. Yeah, and I'd say. Um you know, we keep talking about fit, right? You're trying to find the best fit college for you. We as admission officers are trying to find the best fit students for our university, right? And yep. so that's what you're going to share with us through um, those essays, those short answers, those personal insight questions, is you're going to share who you are with us so that we can determine if you're a good fit for our institution. So um, the biggest piece of advice I can, can think of there is really, again, <laughs> keep saying it, Dig deep, do that self-reflection. And what is the story that is yours and only yours, right? Thinking about the experience we're living in right now, right? All across the country, depending on where you live, you've been in some sort of stay at home, shelter in place, right? It's something that we're all experiencing in one way or another. If you're gonna write about that in some sort of essay next year, what is the story about this experience that only you can write, right? So think right. of those those essays, those personal insight questions uh, as really your story that will help us determine if you are a good fit. Hey there, team. I'm going to um, chime in and help you all out here because we're getting um, a good amount of questions. Um, so just to piggyback off of the previous question, we are getting a lot of questions from students regarding um, having hiccups in their transcript or um, uh, uh, not being able to access as many AP or um, you know honors courses or their school doesn't allow it. Um, can you all talk a little bit more about how um, colleges um, are really taking a look at context and um, looking at the student's environment and uh, uh, how it will uh, bring a little bit more light to uh, the student and what they have to offer and how they can carry that throughout their application? Yeah. I can start and then Abby, if you want to jump in to feel free. Um, so context is kind of everything, right? When we when we think about institutions who practice holistic admissions like Berkeley does, you know, we read your application cover to cover, so to speak, um, and consider everything that you have told us in that application, um, everything that you've provided, everything that your school may have provided as well. 
Um, we consider all that information in, in, in making our assessment on a, a, a potential score for that particular application. And so when we are um, considering a student's, a big part of that is the consideration of a student's educational environment, right? And home environment, that's also important, but, but let's focus on the educational environment. There are gonna be a number of opportunities for students to convey information to us that we need to know, right? And so for, an, for example, there are a lot of schools out there who are limiting the number of APs, uh, AP courses that any, can, any student can take at any given, in, any given year, right? And so they may limit that to two, maybe three, maybe even one. Um, maybe the school doesn't offer APs at all. Um, maybe the school only offers honors level courses. There, there's a whole combination of scenarios. And, and just as there are 4,000 high school or 4,000 colleges and universities in the United States, there are 10 times as many high schools probably, right? And so it's important for us and for you to kind of to share that information in the application. If your school is limiting um, APs or, or only offers honors or for whatever information is that you want to share, um, it was hard for you perhaps to take APs or it was, it was hard for you to participate in extracurricular activities because you had family obligations. You know, all of that context really comes into play and I think that you should share it um, as concisely and clearly as possible, um, but, but you should share it with, with in all of your applications, not just the UC Berkeley application, not just the UC application, all of your applications. Abby, you wanna jump in? Yeah, no, I, I think you got it. I mean, we talk, the word context, I feel like is probably one of the <laughs> most heavily yeah. used words in my vocabulary in, in my job and in my office. Um, we are reviewing you, your application as an individual within the context of your high school and what is offered within the context of your home community, your family community, um, and, and not comparing that to another student with a different context, right? Um, I saw questions about uh, the number of AP classes and you know, Robert already spoke to that a bit, but even thinking about, um, I've seen some questions about COVID, right? The, the current circumstances we're living in, that may have changed the offerings that are available at your high school, that may have changed- um, Grading scales. Grading, yeah, grading scales, whether or not you're able to take the SAT or ACT. I've seen questions um, about being test optional, right? So context is always a part of our admission process in terms of reviewing your application within your own personal context. Um, but then this year, especially, we're gonna be reviewing applications um, within the context of the current circumstances, right? And so we have had to adjust and say that um, we will not require the SAT or ACT knowing that some students may not be able to take it prior to applying. And so I've seen the questions around what are you gonna weigh more heavily? I wouldn't say we're gonna weigh anything more heavily. We're gonna take all of the different pieces of the holistic and contextual review um, and just look at all of them um, minus the testing for those of you who don't have that score. Um, so it's it's absolutely a contextual review, um, a holistic and contextual review. We Holistic admission is thrown out a lot. A lot of admission officers talk, talk about holistic admission. We, we can't really stop there. The context is so hugely important to our, our process. I will also just add, I think the one question that I ask every single application that I read, and believe me, I read a lot, um, so I ask this question a lot. <laughs> um, I always ask at the end of the process, at the end of the, that particular read, what did the student do with what they had available to them, right? Um, and, and so if I can answer that question clearly, um, it, it's super helpful to me in kind of coming up with a with a score for that particular application. So just consider that when you're when you're, you know, when I said earlier that you're you're basically painting a, writing a book for us or or, or painting a picture for us. Um, you know, does the, the, can you answer that question with what you've presented to us, right? Yes, um, and I just wanted to do a time check, um, everyone. So we are about three minutes over the hour, and I want to be mindful of all of our time. You all have provided some amazing questions, and at College Greenlight, we are just so appreciative that you all have given your time to um, even just write out those questions. So um, what we're going to be doing um, moving forward um, is we're going to actually try and consolidate all of the questions that you all have asked um, throughout the 
co uh, college block party series. And we will um, send a block, uh, we'll ask all of our admissions representatives for their insights to help answer those questions. And we'll send a, um, a an email um, um, over to you all with um, a blog post that will feature on the College Greenlight um, website. Um, now, Robert, Abby, I am um, so grateful to have you all here. Um, before we let you go, can you please um, provide any last minute remarks that you would like to share with our audience today? Sure. Go for it. Uh, yeah, I can start. Um, yeah, so Robert mentioned earlier that I I didn't have you know these this feeling of this is the place for me. My my best friend visited the very first college she visited. Um, she drove there um, with her dad. It was pouring down rain and they couldn't even get out of the car. They pulled down an alleyway um, and she said, this is the place for me. That's not me. That's not how I react to life. I'm not that decisive. Um, and so I didn't ever have that aha moment. And as I said, I was arriving at my college campus thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going far away from home. Is this the place for me? And I had a great four year experience there. I wouldn't trade it for anything. So if you don't have that feeling, it's okay. And if you get to a college or university and realize that you didn't make the right choice, or maybe you continue to do that self-reflection and you change over your four year experience and you decide to go somewhere else, that's also okay. Yeah, of course you wanna pick one institution and stay there. Um, there. There are benefits for that, but this isn't a life or death decision. You have to make it once and make it right or, or lots of things are gonna go wrong. So just be aware of that. And the last thing I'd say is where you go to college is a lot less important than what you do there. Big or small or far away from home. Did I steal your thunder? You stole mine. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll end there. Robert, pick it up. No, pick it's. It. I was yeah. going to say, like, whether you go to a big, you were literally saying, took the words right out of my mouth. Um, whether you go to a big school or a small school, like, it really, it, you can be a, a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond. I mean, like, it doesn't really matter. What matters is what you do with the opportunities you have available to you, right? Um, I, I went to a smaller institution in the University of California, and one of the alums has been the longest serving chancellor at UCLA. Another was the vice president of finance at Visa, right? So not the most recognized UC campus, um, and, and still, you know, those people did very great things with their lives, and you will too, right? So regardless of where you decide to go, regardless of where you end up, um, you know, take advantage of every opportunity that's presented to you, right? Um, college is a time about exploration and, and, and academic inquiry, yes, but, but also kind of self-realization, self-actualization. And a lot of us um, become real adults, I think, during, during those four years or, or maybe even a little longer, you know, and, and it's a really great time to kind of just um, explore things and to try new things and to try um, academic areas that you never thought that you would ever have an interest in, right? I think that's the best part of a liberal arts education is you get to try so many different things um, and, and explore areas that, that you never thought you would. One of my favorite classes was a geology class and I was not a geology major, I was an economics major. Maybe I should have been a geology major. I might have uh, been doing something completely different by now, but who knows? Um, so, so take advantage of all those opportunities and re recognize that, that um, it, it really doesn't matter where you go, big or small, it really does matter with, with uh, what you do with that opportunity. Thank you, team. Before we sign off, um, UC Berkeley included a post survey um, that we would like you all to complete to provide your feedback. Tell us how it went, um, if you found something helpful or if there was something that was missing. We want to hear what you all had to say. Um, we've included a, a button at the um, bottom of the screen, complete feedback survey. So it takes about one minute and it will mean um, uh, uh, the world for us. And uh, 
at this moment, I am going to dismiss Abby and Robert, and we're going to close out. But thank you all so much for being a part of our lineup for our second edition of our college block party. So happy to have you all here, and we'll um, stay tuned. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you all. Great chatting Bye. with you. Bye. All right, team. So we hope you all um, really feel uh, more informed and comfortable about your, uh, your college options um, and really just knowing your power and your confidence going into uh, this uh, emissions uh, year. Um, hopefully you all have learned some really awesome colleges um, and gained some really um, great insights from Colgate, Smith, and UC Berkeley um, and met some amazing new virtual friends along the way. We've seen you all chatting about in the chat rooms um, and sharing your social needs. Um, uh, and so we ask that you guys uh, keep this going, uh, please. We made it to... 3,000 um, and, well, let's see, 3,000 and five, nearly 3,500. 3, That's pretty impressive, but I think we can do better um, starting tomorrow. Uh, so please tell your friends um, about the College Block Party. And we're getting a lot of questions. We will be sending over the recordings. Um, for you all to review. Um, but I also want to let you all know, if you click on this link here, um, all of the recordings are instant, instantly replayed. So you'll have this 24-7. Um, Just go back here, but we'll be sending over the recording um, shortly. Um, so again, uh, tomorrow uh, we are bringing three more colleges, Emory University, Washington University in St. Louis and Tufts University uh, to the stage. And you all don't want to miss it. Uh, they'll be discussing topics including COVID-19 and how it will impact your college application in the fall, tips on how to begin your college essay, and a special college admissions one-on-one -on -one presentation in Espanol with Tufts University. We can't wait to see you all tomorrow. Please be safe and don't forget to share with your friend. Hashtag, hashtag college block party 20, and we will see you soon. College Greenlight out.